yeah so we are uh, selecting uh, 1262 uh, ma'am i want to ask that uh, why android 4.2 uh, named as uh, the code name ice cream sandwich i mean i would have loved to answer that but i am not the one who has developed it or who has named it actually <laughs> so that was just uh, i mean what google came up with i mean those are just uh, alphabetical sequence names of dessert names if you just i mean it's ics then it's a jelly bean i j if you just look at it it's alphabetical sequence names of the desserts all right i mean there is no access significance of it yeah thank you 1020 how to get the maximum uh, working speed of the processor of android yeah definitely i mean the processing speed will definitely depend on the processor which is used and uh, if you i am not sure how what do you want to ask if you want to ask that whether your application runs fast or not that's what you want to make sure or what is it exactly no no i want to ask that what is the maximum speed it can go so the processor uh, which is provided in right now our akash tablet is 1.2 gigahertz it depends completely on the processor which is there in your device that's it thank you, thank you. remote center 1164 Ma'am, why DVM is used? My question is why DVM is used when JVM is uh, more compatible. And uh, operations of uh, uh, when you comparing DVM and JVM, uh, DVM is a much better. Uh, I think JVM is a much better than DVM. Then why we are using DVM uh, for uh, Android development? So basically, as I already shown you, DVM optimizes code, optimizes the Java byte code itself. i had mentioned this point in my presentation also java byte code is a pretty verbose code there are a lot of redundant things are there in a java byte code so what dx compiler or what dalvik byte code does is it optimizes code at several layers so i had mentioned this point also that if you decompile your java byte code you will get everything back as it is but if you try to do this with dalvik byte code it's not possible because it gets optimized optimized to such a level that it is not possible so the dalvik byte code basically is more optimized compared to the uh, java byte code and that's why dvm is used the code has to be optimized so that it will run faster compared to the java byte code because we are talking about the tablets and devices we are not talking about the desktop and laptops here which has you know lots of power to support the application i hope it answered your question you. yes ma'am yes and thank you we have for bpit thank you so much remote center 1138 uh you explained about sandboxing right yes, yes. sandboxing yeah according to sandboxing uh, no two applications can communicate with each other but my question is uh, android has a my question is android has a lot of antivirus applications so without even communicating to any other application how will it identify the viruses i mean how antivirus application uh, needs the d- shared data i didn't understand yeah how antivirus applications will identify viruses if it can't communicate to other applications i mean see there will be definitely the applications can communicate to each other with certain permissions it won't be straight forward i mean if you don't put a permission in your android manifest file it won't happen you need some set of permissions in order your application to communicate with other application it is possible but a by default application won't communicate to each other that's what the point was 1057 uh, my question is what is a virtual machine can you please explain so basically what do you understand by a real machine what happens on a real machine you can uh, whatever you do on your desktop or a laptop everything gets executed at a assembly language code right so virtual machine is nothing but a virtual i mean a image of a real machine what do you understand by a virtual world it's an image of real machine which helps you to re- helps you to do the same thing what real machine does it for you and this vm is a virtual machine is a part which makes a java as a platform independent so basically it's nothing but a image of a real machine whatever your real machine can do everything i mean the maximum things will be done by a uh, virtual machine 
a better example of content provider uh, so actually uh, there is a dedicated uh, there is a dedicated session on this building blocks and vivek would be conducting it so i would like him to explain what is a content provider the best example is like we have in android phones we have the uh, contacts is where it is stored it is stored in a uh, database inside it there is one sql lite database it is embedded inside android so i i think this is the best example contacts and name number in the phone so basically your contacts data will be shared across the different applications like the application which is uh, dialing a number all right which is giving a notification that you had a missed call so all the, i mean you will see the name of the person from whom you got a missed call so all this data is getting shared across what is api level i hope your question was what is api level so api api level is nothing but a unique integer identification of api framework so what is this api when you will deal with android programming uh, you need to mention what is the minimum api level your application will work on what would be the maximum version on which it will run on so here what api will come into the picture basically api decides what all things you can access in your application it will it will basically contain certain set of classes some functionalities lot of attributes which you can use in your application so basically it will decide your application can support what all things when you will start coding when you will start uh, looking at the technical session in android you will come across this api very often and that time it would be more clear for you 1 2 4 3 LIBC library at the back end for implementing a C code in a application so how the compiler back end is putting the C code into and uh, putting it into a dex file i will play okay so uh, in the architecture diagram there was one green layer of libraries have you seen that the libraries i hope you were not sleeping at that time so there was something uh, libraries and what it i had mentioned is these are open source libraries in that layer itself you can have your own library you with uh, help of ndk that is a uh, native development uh, toolkit where you can just uh, import your c c++ code and uh, get it converted into the .dex file so it it is done using a ndk concept whatever games you see in android most of them are done using like that the basic coding the basic physics behind the gaming application is done using c++ and those get ported on the android so that happens with the ndk concept at the libraries level thank you is, is it possible to get the uh, java source code from the dot apk file you are doing a reverse engineering so from dot apk you want to go to the java source code right yeah i mean it is possible but it's pretty difficult i had mentioned this during the session also that because of the dot dex format because this is the code is optimized at such a level that it is not possible to get your source code back so if you are thinking that you know i will uh, from google play store or some from somewhere else i will get a dot apk file i'll try to decompile and get the source code then copy paste in my application no practically it's not possible okay i mean reverse engineering is possible almost in every domains yes it is but it is pretty difficult thank you ha uh ha -huh. yeah okay so i i hope your question was is it possible to get your source code back from your java byte code or not right mm -hmm. if that is the question yes there are a lot of third party tools available using which you can decompile your code and get your basic code back 3117 svds indor go ahead with your question can you please explain the application fundamentals of android once again and uh, stack base and register base okay so i guess you were sleeping during the session or what <laughs> all right let me just briefly explain you back so first question was um, uh, your register base and stack base right so as you had seen i mean this is a mostly a microprocessor concept how the instructions get executed at the processor level so in a stack base basically a stack operation happens where you know push in and pop in operation happens so you whenever you have to do any operation 
you have to push the data first using a stack pointer then pop the result again. So there is a stack where you know normal push and pop operation happens. So for every instruction you have to get your operand that is fetch your operand then do your, uh, uh, do your I mean whatever operation it is add subtraction whatever it is and pop your result back. So this is how happens in the stack base whereas in register base you give directly the register address in the instruction itself. So the instructions which needs to fetch operand give it back these instructions are saved that is why the number of instructions get received uh, get reduced. So the, I had shown you the example just adding a two name uh, numbers it required a four instructions in stack based where in register based it was done using a simple one instruction. The length of instruction increases because you have to give the register address but the number of uh, instructions gets reduced. That is about the stack based and register based and I guess your second question was the application fundamentals that is a dot apk file. I mean uh, do not uh, be I mean go, go into detail at this point because when technical session will start you will see how to install dot apk on the device and once it I mean whatever things I told you that was just the behind the scene what have once you get to know understand what happens in the front scene what is there in dot apk how do you compile when you compile then what all things get packed along with it it will be more clear for you right now just understand dot apk is a format which gets installed on the android device and basically it installs your op application and it it has along with the code lot of other things like a manifest resources resources can be your just images video if you want to play using your applications uh, manifest file I told you is a controller file it decides what all app, uh, permissions your application requires. So this all gets combined into the one package as a dot dex which gets installed on the device like what you have in a dot jar right there also you have a manifest there you also you have a code there also you have a resources lot of things get compressed and gets uh, combined to the jar similarly here it gets combined to the dot apk. I hope that answers your question. Ma'am, I have another question. Then when we switch from one application to another application, where are sensation stores? Uh, like we touch our application and uh, uh, go from one page to another page, then a log is maintained of these uh, sensations, our input. So where these, where these are stored? So I had shown you something called as an activity backstack. Uh, you cannot call it exactly a log because this is uh, getting handled by an activity manager at the framework level. So this gets stored at the backstack level. I mean um, not exactly a log file you can say. Uh, basically in your application you will only call yeah. Uh, can we drive these uh, sensation like what we have already touched or we used can we drive these in our program? Yes definitely. I mean. Uh, if I uh, get you correctly you want to what you want to do is you want to just touch the screen it goes to the next application or sorry next screen or something right. Yes it is possible it is everything is on touch we are talking about the on touch environment completely a touch screen. I am asking this uh, when we touch on any uh, uh, page or any application this is stored somewhere in uh, our uh, logs or uh, where we can say and so any storage. So can we uh, retrieve these logs from in our program? Okay, so basically if you are trying to develop some such application which is you know happening on touch something is happening. So there are concept of on touch listeners. So you know once you on touch on the screen anywhere there are on touch listener will listen to the event and you can write a code whatever you want inside that listener. So that is what will happen in case of a custom application if you are trying to develop something that on touch something should be happen. Yeah remote center 1271. Madam I have no actually difficult technical doubts but I have a simple question to ask to clarify and that question is actually uh, you, are, you, are, you are showing us all the demo on the Unix platform but most of the people are not comfortable with Unix platform. Linux Linux platform so is it possible for us to work in the windows environment yes, yes definitely. if it is so will you ex will you be explaining yeah go ahead madam uh, i hope i got your 
Yes, yes, sir. I hope I got your question correctly. That whether uh, this everything, whatever we are showing you, whether it works on a Windows or not. Basically, yes, Android can be installed on Windows, and it it runs flawlessly on Windows. There is no issue of it. Accelerometer is an app of Akash, as you mentioned. But what actually it does, and how it helps us? Okay. Uh, so I hope you can see my tablet, right? So now. Right now, the orientation is a horizontal, right? If I switch my tablet like this, so can you see the orientation now? So this is the answer to your question. This is what accelerometer does. I mean, depends on the orientation because we are ta talking about the tablets and smartphones. You can just view it in you know any direction you want. It's not we are not talking about the desktop or laptop, which you know even which are difficult to even port it from one place to another. So we are talking about the tablet, smartphones, in or any area orientation you just so that the whole screen switches. So this is what the accelerometer feature is. So you have a vertical screen. Previously you had a horizontal screen. So now again horizontal. So this is what uh, accelerometer does for you. Uh, we have some announcement over here to do and then we will go for the lunch break. So basically, uh, basically we received the feedback that you know uh, for some sessions the code and uh, lot of uh, slides were, were not visible. So we have already uploaded it on a GitHub. So all these technical sessions, every presenter has already recorded their session and have uploaded on this website. So you can straightforward go and check out. Let me see if I can show you the format of it. So if you have just missed out something, something was not visible due to bandwidth, some, some issue was there because see at our remote, at our center we can see everything clearly. Okay. So if there is some bandwidth network issue, something not visible, couldn't hear, you can go, you can still, I mean there is still you haven't lost anything. You can visit this and you will have everything over there, right from the example code which you can directly import in your Eclipse and try to run the slides and the videos. The whole session video has been recorded and uploaded. Let me just check if I, I can show you that link right away. Yeah. So, so basically this is the link. If you see this, you will have session wise all details that is a Java basic introduction to Android. This is all day one sessions. So we have already uploaded slides video on it and along with the example code as well. So if you go inside this, you will find the example code. So the Java program part one, part two, these are straightforward Eclipse project which can which you can import and check out. And these are slides. Along with that, here are the videos present. So the all videos have been uploaded on YouTube. The links have been given here. So you can just go ahead and check out. So basically the important videos would be for installation because a lot of people will try the installation. Uh, afternoon session will be dedicated completely for installation. In case again you miss out something, so this is the pl uh, place where you can visit. And along with this, we uh, we will soon upload it on a Moodle also, so so that uh, you will have access to it. Okay, it has been already. Uh, my team has communicated that it has been already uploaded on Moodle, so you can go and check this out. Uh, thank you, and we will have an our lunch break. We will resume back at sharp two o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>